not subscribed. So if you want the ASMR to f***ing stop, you are going to subscribe before I snap your What is up, you awesome kisters? It's Sister Reactor, guys. Today we're reacting to Five Nights at Freddy's uh, unused content. So make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to Mina AXA or Mina XA. So, Mina's a... Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> and uh, comment down below. All right, let's get into this bot. Five Nights at Freddy's is a Typical Sis Reacts can't read moment. By game developer Scott Cawthon. The first installment in the franchise released on August 8th, 2014, and it quickly rose to fame due to the way it revolutionized its genre through its unconventional approach and its in-depth lore that still has people talking to this day. For real though, Throughout it's crazy. Unique games, Five Nights at Freddy's always follows the same basic formula. A protagonist attempts to survive against deadly animatronics that may or may not be under a supernatural influence. Hmm. As is the remnant PNG. There is always some unused or removed content that is left out of the final release. This video will be talking about all of the unused content from the main nine games. As you know, it's kind of crazy though. Like, I think I only know about unused content within the first game, but I didn't even know we knew about unused content in like FNAF World. Actually, no, actually, there's definitely some unused stuff in FNAF World that I can remember. How about FNAF 6 through Security Breach? I didn't know that there was actually stuff. As well as the four to be known. Offs. This video will not be covering any lore and will assume you have at least a basic knowledge of the games in question. So warnings <laughs> are basic effect. knowledge is funny. Bearing all that in mind, let's start with Not the even the basic knowledge could be the canon. The original five we don't know. Days. Scott doesn't confirm nor deny. Right away, we can derive from the game's trailer that some things are inconsistent with the final release. We also get to see Bonnie running down the hallway in place of Foxy, and we also get to see him take off the top half of his head to reveal his endoskeleton. A feature that never came back. Of the That's such a shame. Towards the camera, despite many people swearing up and down that they've seen it, is actually not present in the final game. This is a fantastic example of something called the Mandela Effect. Wait. Towards the camera, despite many skeleton. This shot of the animatronics all looking towards the camera, despite many people swearing up and down that they've seen it, is actually not present in the final. A am I undergoing the Mandela effect? I swear to God, it's in the main game. I s is it really not? Is there not an Easter egg of them staring at the camera like that? The game. This is a fantastic example of something called the Mandela effect. Another piece of unused content featured on Scott's channel can be seen in the original gameplay footage video, or what can be assumed to be a cut lives counter being displayed. Oh yeah, I remember this. Five. See, like my knowledge enough, of this was my knowledge of missing stuff from the first game is is there, but I, the second, and the third, and fourth, I don't know. It's only present in the beta version of the game. Because of this, we can likely assume it was a short-lived feature that Scott simply didn't end up liking. Speaking of the beta and demo versions, the monitor interface used to look quite different. As opposed to labeled buttons, yeah. it featured camera icons with cones angled in the direction the camera is facing. On top of that, some of the cameras are this actually looks pretty neat. places. Uh, for example, the backstage camera used to be above the door, but was later moved to the opposite corner. The kitchen camera was also slightly relocated, not that it matters since it has no video feed. The original help wanted to add in the newspaper at the beginning of the game was also slightly different in the original demo. It really? was later changed with a slightly different camera angle, typo corrections, and an altered phone number, probably to avoid prank calls. There are also two images left in the final game that remain unused due to being obviously irrelevant after the demo. Hmm. Get the full version of complete 5-day experience plus two unlockable modes of gameplay. <laughs> In the original mobile port, the game opened with this render of Freddy from the game cover, which was removed later when Click Team released the remastered edition. The remastered old edition also featured a unique sound that played when the hallway lights were activated, which was also fixed in the later remastered version. Huh. When the game was greenlit on Steam, the associated page had this icon with an endoskeleton design that wouldn't make it into the final game. Shame, it man. Sharper S triangular teeth and red eyes. When Scott was creating the like, man, Scott's not not that I'm saying all the other designs that come after uh, the fourth game are bad or anything like that, 
Or I should say, not not to say that any designs that come after Scott's non-affiliation with making the games um, is bad, but like Scott's early day designs used to just be the best. Or not used to be the best. They are the best. Fourth animatronic character. I don't want to say anything that makes it seem like Steel Wolves doing bad. Scrapped it. And then a beaver character, which reminded him too much of his old game, Chipper and Sons Lumber Company. Eventually, he settled on Foxy the Fox. Fun bit of trivia, Foxy's model was made on a 14-hour car ride, which he attributes his I remember reading that to. somewhere. On the official Steam page, some screenshots used are actually missing the night text in the corner by the time. Oh yeah, this I can is see the last that. piece of unused content from the original Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, FNAF 2. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 has less unused content than the first game, but actually has an entirely cut game mechanic. There remains a sprite for oh, a toxicity the, yeah. game, which was later confirmed in Daco's Scott Cawthon interview to be a way to avoid the player keeping the Freddy mask on for too long. Just so you're aware, it's going to be a trend that many of these things are confirmed in the interview that Daco had with Scott Cawthon. That interview is really important. There are also three unused character sprites, two of which belonging to the puppet. The first is a close-up similar to a frame from the jump scare animation, only what the? lacking the white eyes. The next is a full body render, complete with cross brace and strings attached. The file name Whoa. is Puppet in Office, which implies the puppet may have appeared in the office in a similar fashion to other animatronics in that would be horrifying. the game. The other character sprite is this one of Toy Chica, which seems to have a similar implication as the one I just talked about, acting like Toy Bonnie when entering the office. Oh. For some reason, this game also features the sprites for the unused lives feature from the first game, and also the obligatory remaining demo text. The pre-release content this time Wait, around. Wait, what did it just say? Obligatory remaining. You should get the full versions. Things get a lot worse. <laughs> demo text. The pre-release content this time around is a little different, as the second game began the trend of Scott's teaser images from his website. I miss the teasers, man. This teaser image that depicts Mangle and Foxy has a lot that I think is worth talking that about. That teaser goes hard. Well, for starters, the Foxy model used here is not the same model that makes it into the final game. I think that's rather apparent. Uh, rather, it appears to be the model used in the first game, and I'm not sure what this implies because this was not the first teaser, so Scott had most definitely already decided to use slightly different designs for the withered animatronics uh, my hypothesis is that withered foxy's model was just not done yet but the more obvious inconsistency lies here with mangle's hook now anyone who's played oh, the game yeah. knows that mangle does not have a hook um and i have another idea for how that happened i think it's just a product of mangle being taken apart and maybe it was never completely removed from the design but future similar designs for mangle and other foxy types didn't really have hooks either so i don't know hmm. one more thing about mangle that would be cool to see I've mangle have a hook though talk about before is that she appears to be lacking an eyelid or any eyelashes here but that could just be due to the lighting so I'm yeah i'm just gonna probably can't see it because it's all one. black the last inconsistency in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is just the flashlight text above the battery display is missing in some of the early screenshots, and the same edit to the Help Wanted page from the first game is also made in the prequel for the same reasons. No prank calls. Dang, that's the end of FNAF 2. Let me know in the comments down below, by the way, which one is your favorite FNAF, because FNAF 2 has got to be the best one for me. But it would be cool, in my opinion, if Mangle did get a hook in her like you know mangled up state her namesake uh i think she'll look more menacing with like an actual weapon and looking like a deformed monster the third game doesn't have much in the realm of unused content but it is present there are four unused sprites of the puppet one of them actually being the same close-up that went unused in the previous game for oh. some reason a seal vent button sprite is present though this mechanic would seal not vent. be replaced by simply double clicking the camera in the final release there's also text referencing a scratch seventh night and altered green oh. text for the second night for some reason. Similar to the first game, a render of spring trap could be seen when starting up the old mall. May, may I got a theory about the green text. You know how in FNAF 4, he's going to create a whole um, plush trap feature that can help you skip through the night. What if he had an idea for that in FNAF 3, but took it out? Like the green text means like you have like a plush trap enhanced type of night. Or the night goes a bit faster, or you get a 
farther time frame. Devil Port, which was subsequently removed after the remaster, and this game also contains the obligatory leftover demo text and still has the lives counter sprites from the first. Man, he really games. wanted to use lives, but just could not Finally, the Steam fit page. that. Some screenshots from before the release are missing both the night or just and time it counters, out. unlike the first game only missing the night counter. Other screenshots also showed the unfinished map interface, missing the play audio and map toggle buttons, though it mm. may be implied this is done intentionally for the sake of cleaner screenshots for the Steam page. Dang. All right, right in FNAF 4. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 actually has quite a bit of unused content for various reasons. I'll start with the easier ones. There is unused text that says chapter, which is speculated to have chapter. been originally used to separate the end of night minigames into chapters. Uh, there's also an animated star sprite that goes completely unused, and we don't really know what it could have been for. Weird. Like the previous games, there are demo leftovers, though they appear different this <laughs> to time. To be continued, the full version. Unused Shut up, Fredbear goes hard. Actually looks pretty cool. This Even the creator thinks it's cool too. It's funny. Menu render for its creator of this video, I mean. Just like the other ones, it was fixed in the remaster. Blah blah blah. The next cut feature I think is actually quite interesting. In the Halloween DLC, the game had a programmed event after beating the game's 2020-2020 mode, nearly identical to what you'd be treated to after beating Nightmare Mode, except the chest can have the locks removed, though it still cannot be opened. Mm. I'll expand on this piece of unused content in the next section. Nah, for pre-release content, uh, this teaser actually has Nightmare Foxy having a really long snake-like tongue pretty out there but aside from the title screen and some merchandise he is never actually Was it seen me? It. it's confirmed later by scott uh that apparently he just didn't think the tongue was very scary so he removed it so it's terrifying i don't know about i don't know why scott didn't think that here with nightmare mangle you can see nightmare mangle hanging from the ceiling like the original Come hang out. capable of but this feature is not actually seen anywhere in the final game to end this game's that would be too. Actually... I ain't gonna lie to you. That now that would be too horrifying. You know, like you got like little Timmy playing, and then like he he checks the he checks the bed. You know, gets the freddles off the bed. He turns around, and then Mangle's just up there with her face in the shadows, teeth hanging out, and then jump scare. Actually, yeah, I'm... slight difference in the audio. But F4 was, was a different breed of scary. In trailer versus in the final game. And it sounds a bit more like an animal than what we ended up with. And to be honest, I kind of like it. It sounds scarier in my opinion. And I wish we would have gotten this one instead. Final version. Let me hear that again. Instead. Yeah, that sounds fire. Five Nights at Freddy's World actually Oh, oh okay. That was, that was the end. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> and, uh, for starters, there's an entirely unused music track, Ice Cave, which you can hear playing right now. Uh, and another piece of content related to audio is this unused JJ voice line, which I think is pretty hilarious. Now I'm going to kick your ass! Wait, what? I, I can... Wait, seriously? <laughs> Wait, is that actually in the game? I did... When I said at the beginning of this video that I knew that there was some unused stuff in FNAF World, I thought it was because of the overworld versus what we got when it released and why Scott made the game free because the game wasn't what we expected or something like that at the time. I forgot. There's also hidden text in the game's I thought that's what he was referring to, but I didn't know that was there. What ending you do, and it says, Well, congratulations. You beat a fictional monster from a fictional game. Bravo. I miss the trolls, deal. man. The next one is actually the result of a programming error and was not explicitly removed from the game, though it's not present. After 8-Bit Fredbear first tells you to search for the clock, he is meant to say, if you keep following him, you will only finish a story. There is something more important for you to do, but instead, it automatically brings the player to the loading screen, ignoring hmm. his dialogue entirely. Strange. Remember in the last section when I said something related to the box, the infamous box, would be in this game's removed content? Well, a sprite for the open box is actually present in this game's files. It is theorized that this might have just been intentionally left in the game as a way for Scott to mess with the fans, but who knows? You know, and so at the time, I ain't even gonna lie to you, that's probably what it was for. If the... <laughs> 
if the box doesn't show up in the main game, which I believe it didn't, then yeah, he, he was messing with us. The non pre release, especially since he said, I think at a later time, too, the box's contents have changed. Like, oh, like features are sort of we'll never know what's inside so that I'll box. Try to run through them a bit quicker. There's a sprite for unlocking a red chip named Curse Haunting, despite the chip itself. Curse Haunting the game. It may have been replaced with the green chip Quick Start Party. Brow Boy was originally meant to be a common enemy like Ball Boy, as can be assumed by this unused animated sprite. There's a Why his arms doing sprite that. derived from Slumberfish that was likely a catchable creature in Dee Dee's fishing hole. It's the only non-robotic creature in its associated collection, so this is probably why it was never included in the final game. There's an alternate animated cupcake sprite, and its programming tells the Look animation at him to go. stop after the cupcake has bobbed it down once. There's a text sprite that says Party Creation for the character selection menu from earlier versions of the game. It was removed when updated 1.20 added to the miss FNAF world. Characters. I'm gonna play it again. In the original release, this star sprite would have been used to signify if the player had gotten any of the three endings. Mm. There is a file that appears to those stars. a strength stat for characters on the character selection menu. It is never used in the game, and some programming of the expression is left in the game files. Mm. Finally, on to the pre-release content. Though it isn't used in the game, Scott refers to this game's characters as the adventure animatronics, which is backed up by copyrighted phrases. Adventure version? Enemies, unnamed Robot Bear and Golden Mech Crab were never used in the final game, despite appearing in trailers and early screenshots. Mm. On another early screenshot, Shadow Freddy is shown with the Pizza Wheel 2 attack, which is later replaced with Escape Key. This next one is one of what my is favorites key? in this whole video, Forgot. which doesn't make any sense. So, in the official trailer, Freddy is shown to have a diagonal walking sprite, and in the first release of the game, Freddy could not walk diagonally. This already doesn't really make any sense. In version 1.20, <laughs> Freddy can walk diagonally, but for whatever reason, the depicted sprite from the original trailer was actually not recycled for this purpose. I could not uh. possibly tell you why that is, but that is how it is. Strange. Finally, the slow start enemies chip from the initial very, very strange. The game was missing its colon and has since had its spot reassigned to the block jump scare chip. After that, UCN huge chunk of unused content. So what was unused at UCN? Down just a little bit. We start with an unused sprite of Ballora receiving a shock from the primary control module spot with her endoskeleton face exposed. I think this actually looks pretty cool. Apparently, terrifying this is too. To display when activating the controlled shock, which is not surprising. Oh, he's a sister uh, occasion. This is a UCN, yeah. One of things in this video is this unused render of Circus Baby, oh. which might have been like a, an early. And I like how red it is too. It's like, you know, how Freddy's like trademark thing is like red and black in the game's covers. Now Baby's like taking over for this game and she's red and black. I like how he chose the blue too. He showed like the opposite of red and blue. Another trend we've seen before, but here we can see an early map that would have been overlaid while in the vents in the primary control module mm. and the circus control. There's I've also seen no a maps. technically unused huh. eighth minigame cutscene associated with the custom night, though it is near identical to the first cutscene, just with the neighbors looking a little disturbed, so there's not really any reason for it to have been Can in also the final be seen game. Glitch. Another interesting bit is these two unused voice lines for the female computer voice. Motion trigger. Technician control. Glass pressure trigger. Please do not push against the glass. Hmm. In terms of pre-release content, the fourth teaser depicts seven Bitty Babs, but there are only two at any specific moment in the actual game, so it doesn't actually make that much sense. Another teaser shows Bon Bon and the vents related to the custom night, though this never actually happens. Oh, to yeah. it off, there's actually an absurd plethora of unused Funtime Freddy voice lines, and apparently Funtime Freddy was originally meant to have a German accent? Listen to this. What did he have Kellen do? We need someone to ask Kellen about. We need someone to ask Kellen the real questions. Why does Scott have him do the the accent? And um, why didn't Scott let him keep it? Um, like, yo, someone send this clip to Kellen on Twitter. We need to get some answers. <laughs> send a clip of me asking. This section, I'm going to combine Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night since they are. He probably doesn't even remember. One game and the amount of content that is unused warrants them being combined. 
In Pizzeria Simulator, we can see an unused star sprite, which would go on to be used. Man, he really loves the. Night. I'm really glad he kept the star themes throughout the games. Uh, there's an animated sprite that shows that tape recorder may have originally been reversible, as well as several unused buttons that are. Ooh, that would be cool. Tape recorder. An unused Molten Freddy blueprint is also present, describing him as having the most remnant of Afton's creations, and an unused white arrow that was also found. Why is that unused? That that is like super important to the lore, isn't it? Um, probably for use in the game menu. I don't know. In Ultimate Custom Night, a piece of demo text remains that describes a point limit for playing. Oh, I'm stupid. I referred to sister locations custom night as UCN earlier. Sorry about that. There's also five unused character sprites in this game's files. Adventure Endo 01 and Candy Cadet were both promised for the game by Scott, but Adventure Endo 01 never made it. Oh man. Rockstar Chica also has an unused flipped sprite for appearing on the right side of the office, likely because of her flipped bib. Speaking of Chica's, Toy Chica had her movement and jump scare flipped after patch 1.021. The last Weird. unused character sprite is this animated sprite of Bonnet getting her nose boofed, which doesn't seem to have any place in the final game at all, so I don't know it's why. It's hilarious. Finally, there is an unused desk sprite with brighter lighting and fixed eyebrows on Freddy, along with an unused title graphic that simply says Bro. brighter lighting and fixed eyebrows on You can see that? I, I couldn't even tell he had eyebrows. All right. <laughs> along with an unused FNAF fans so always says looking. Mind. Always so vigilant. Dang, we're already on a uh, what? The first installment in the new no, help wanted. Nights at Freddy's narrative, Help Wanted, contains quite a bit of unused content to be found. Can we talk about how the Help Wanted cover kind of goes hard with everybody like stitched together, like in a remnant blob type of way? For one, there's an unused spring bonnie texture that remains unutilized. There are no mm. differences between it and spring trap except for a small stitch indent on the upper left-hand side of the torso. It's possible this may have been the original planned model for glitch trap, but we don't know for sure. And also full models for blacklight variants of the main four animatronics, Blacklight variants. Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Though Foxy's textures are like 5% complete with just like the eyes, so that's weird. I don't know, the black and white There's Foxy an kind of goes off. animation of a freddle going underneath bed, implying they may have originally been planned for Night Terrors mode. Mm. A random doll model known as Toy Proxy in the game files Toy can also Proxy. Be found, likely a placeholder for plush crap. There's also an alternate version named Big Toy Proxy, which was probably a placeholder in the Night Terror sections as well. Heard of Toy Having, Proxy, here's uh, Biggest Toy Proxy. Those of Funtime Freddy and Nightmare Fredbear. There's also an unused older model for Chica's Cupcake, which has a more vibrant purple and takes its iris textures from the Funtime animatronics. There are several remaining files that suggest a multiplayer mode may have been considered with a folder labeled multiplayer containing files such as character mm. info, character info table, MP game mode, and similar concepts. There's also a photo of the second game's map taken from the Freddy Files, an official guidebook to Five Nights at Freddy's. It shows the path the withered animatronics can take in the second game's associated mode. Mm. There's an entire 20 image slideshow of showbiz pizza animatronic and endoskeleton photos. They are found in the prize what? counter TV screen after pressing the red button on the exotic butter's basket, which was seen in some early gameplay footage. Scott removed these upon the release of the game due to fans comparing the images to actual showbiz pizza photos. Uh. For some final miscellaneous features before we get into the game's DLC, we have early textures of the processed poultry proxel chicken box which were found with slight differences including a cartoon chicken instead of Hako says i don't know what the hell this means man on top of it along with realistic chicken wings accompanied by the text tasty fried chicken hot and tasty and fresh and spicy i love how he'll add his own There's little a flash i love how the creator of this video will add their own little commentary alongside the uh the pictures or just outright say it slight freeze map which features the animatronics from the first game and vents it seems Flash to be a freeze map. leftover. The mobile exclusive Princess Quest minigame was meant to have a theme known as Castle Music Title Theme.OGG, which is a revamped version of the track Through the Cracks from Freddy in Space 2, which I'll be talking about in a few sections. The Help Wanted DLC, Bro, Curse of Dreadbear. I just noticed Toy Chica looks like Samus. But then again, I mean, I've only looked at this 
art for this game like probably three times in my life, so I guess I just wouldn't that notice. That the, the gun, DLC, the outfit. The Curse of Dreadbear has a few unused things. The logo for the DLC's old name, Rise of Frank and Freddy, remains in the game files. A different texture Rise for of the Frank and Freddy. is left unused, apparently meant for a build a mangle level in the spooky mansion section. Since the texture appears burnt, they were dubbed burnt frettles. Grim Foxy has an old animation that went unused, howling rather than raising his scythe. Uh, there were also scythe? various early icons with slight visual discrepancies. Even after the new levels were added in the DLC, the coming soon icons stayed behind in the game files. Finally, for pre-release content, there's just a handful of differences. An early screenshot showed a discolored Nightmare Fredbear. Spring Bomb oh, yeah, was I remember that. featured on some promotional art for the game, further implying, along with the unused model, that he was meant to appear as Glitch Trap. In the PAX East demo, a fan-made cupcake model is featured by Super Kerbin from 2015. It was replaced later by Scott's official model. <laughs> yeah, I remember the whole controversy with fan models. I can't believe that even happened. Like, come on, Steel Wolf. <laughs> But I mean, you know, it's over. The last removed content is from the current. Hopefully that Dread never Bear happens DLC, again. Simply showing Dreadbear appearing in the spooky mansion hallway, which never happens in the final game. Good bear, where they're looking tall. On November 25th, 2019, a mobile augmented reality game named uh -oh. Five Nights at Freddy's Special Delivery was released. There's a decent amount of content kept hidden in this game, starting with many faz facts that were intended to reveal Fast extra facts. lore that were not present in the release. In a similar realm, there are many unused emails, which I will include a link Wait. present in the release. In a the original animatronics featured spring lock. Uh, the, the original animatronics featured spring lock suits that had to be hand cranked to allow them to be worn by employees. Faz Bear's twisted pizza recipe was voted most yummy by six out of ten children in every survey from. 1988 to 1993. Uh, the first location of the Freddy's franchise was actually called Fredbear's Family Diner. The famous William Afton is the man responsible of the creation of the animatronics that we all know and love. Some of the first animatronics built by William Afton feature... What does that say? I'm going to have to full screen the screen to read it, but it's going to look weird. A claw mechanisms that were able to hide away. In a similar realm, there are many unused emails, which I will include a link to in the description, as there are far too many to cover here. Interestingly enough, there's also evidence that the game was originally intended to have a paid VIP subscription service, likely including <laughs> rewards and overall making the game experience easier, as many paid options. Yeah, if there's a FNAF I don't like do. that much, it's definitely this one. Safely assume Ew, the service was AR, is, in favor of AR wasn't it for me. Bug fixes due to Just time wasn't. Constraints. Good idea, but poorly reason, executed, Plus I Trap guess. has a handful of unused prototype gameplay assets, which were removed upon him actually being added to the game about a year after its release. The prototypes weren't very faithful to the original design, and they were much improved when he was actually added. As you can see. On a similar note, there are two entirely unimplemented animatronics. There is a beta version of Lefty, his CPU icon asset still existing within the files, and his old model and animations from 2019 also still being present. The model kind of goes hard. Is Easter Chica found Easter in the Chica. files in 2020 for no apparent reason. Shamrock Freddy also has slightly different earlier assets. There are three unused shop renders, which is a shame because I think they look quite cool, but they were yeah. removed in an unknown update. In terms of pre-release content, there's only really three things worth noting. We can see in an old screenshot an early beta version of the HUD with some slight differences, like the remnant icon and an on-off caption for the flashlight. Before the implementation of the balloon reward system, they were originally meant to be FAS crates, tiered bronze, Faz silver, crates? and gold. Finally, there is some beta code that remains in the game in the form of an unused file. All it contains is values for some item drop rates, including unobtainable items such as that plus shoot <laughs> and Shadow CPU Bonnie and file name plus shoot and CPU. Here, I'm going to be combining two spin-offs into one section because their content individually is too small to constitute a whole section. So, Freddy in Space 2 is a reference to a minigame in Five Nights at Freddy's World. FNAF 57. Freddy in Space. 
man. It's a silly side-scrolling 2D platform shooter that was made to promote a hashtag cancel cancer Five Nights at Freddy's charity live stream hosted by Matt Pat from Game Theory to fund St. Jude's Children's Research man. Hospital. Most of this game's unused content is in it's the form of It's been a long time sprites. since I've seen this game. Whoa. Is that a Lego on the bottom right? What the hell is that puppet model? Screw that. What's this? Oh, what? Oh, that's kind of crazy looking right here. A YouTuber named DJ Sterf did a beta test playthrough of the game. What's going on in the gameplay in the background? A YouTuber named DJ Sterf did a beta test playthrough of the game, which shows some differences as well. Frank and Foxy's AI is partially unfinished, and he was defeated much easier than in the final game. Hmm. S. Cotton Boss Sprite was changed twice and was originally S. called S. Secret Boss X. There's also missing treasures, a pixelated red key, and this art that was later slightly changed. It is worth noting I'm not gonna risk it. looks a lot like Roxanne from our next major game, but isn't confirmed to be her. A similar 2D side-scroller beat-em-up style game was made to promote the next major installment of <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, named Security Breach Fury's Rage. This game has three squares. For some reason, the red one is smaller than the other two. And... That's what? Just, that's all of the unused content. <laughs> Maybe it was it's a charging meter? Spin-off game, U2's Presents, Five Nights at Freddy's. Spin-off game? game U2's? To promote their line of security breach merchandise. However, I had a hard time finding any information on the game, let alone unused content. So it seems to be generally unknowworthy. So I'm going to be ignoring it in this discussion. At long last, we security arrive breach. at the last major installment in the series. Five Nights at Freddy's Security There is a lot of new stuff. See on the way later this year, the game is infamous for having an incredibly troubled production and a really, really buggy initial launch. Naturally, there is, frankly, an insane... Tell me, tell me your favorite Security Breach bug that came out when the game released. My favorite is one that I personally had to send Scott since he had sent me the game. Um... Every time I was on the final part where you had to get your last animatronic, so you know you go through the game getting Monty, Glamrock Chica, and all those other ones. Every time I got Monty's claws, I put Freddy in the little chamber thing, but in instead of it going to the animation where I had to press the buttons, I kept seeing through Freddy's eyes and I seen Gregory in like the whole map behind him. It, it was so weird. Like, I could see every robot walking around through the walls and stuff, and Gregory just standing there with a stupid flashlight. An amount of cut content in this game. It's so nature. weird. Uh, according to the executive producer of Steel Wool Studios, Wait. the development game, due to its nature. Uh, according to the executive producer of Steel Wool Studios, the development team working on the game, future content updates are planned to re-implement, quote-unquote, most of the game's cut content so this list may become outdated in the future but will it really probably not i'll begin with unused features there was an extras menu similar to that of past games which had tabs for a survival mode survival games, mode office games a character gallery dlc and credits though it remains unimplemented Wow. The survival mode was an unused gameplay mode where the difficulty, our length, and lives of Gregory were adjustable. He finally added the lives into the game. Jeez. Finally. The security levels of the rooms were raised. Prize box spawning was randomized, though there was an option to spawn all of them, which was apparently very laggy. And at 12.50 a.m., the daycare attendant spawns to enforce the time limit. But since uh -oh. the mode is unused, the prize boxes, Glamrock Freddy, and recharge stations are all completely unusable. So the player always dies. The character gallery had an obvious use. The character with the models of characters and some of the arcade cabinet models. It was removed from the files in the February 2022 patch. There are remnants, huh. I get it, of a time and difficulty scaling feature. The difficulties being easy, normal, and nightmare, which was semi-preserved in the game's survival mode, even though that wasn't released. There are also many unused entities. 
A frozen Glamrock Endo can be found in the files. And frozen Glamrock an Endo. Side what in the FNAF AR? The existence of unused lines that reference this frozen Endo. There are also six Wait, I want to read that. Unused lines. Gregory says that's a frozen... That Endo's frozen solid. It's holding some sort of camera. Freddy, it's cold in here. Freddy, it's freezing in here. Glamrock Freddy says, perhaps if you adjusted the heat in the boiler room, you can melt it. The boiler room is down in the ut util doors. I'll mark it on your map. However, I do not recommend you to go there. Gregory says, hot, too hot. That reference this frozen endo. There are also six unused staff bot variants. These are the anthropomorphic test device staff bot meant for testing race cards in Roxy Raceway. The nanny staff bot, kind of self-explanatory. Here is only broken in game. Staff bot shown in an early trailer. He wore a sombrero and served food at L Chips. A mime sombrero. staff bot, likely meant for the daycare theater. A golf player staff bot, likely oh, meant for theater golf. He looks so and a cool. Sales bot, which was intended to sell balloons around the pizza plex. Probably. As far as <laughs> unused locations go, there are only a few. There are a few hallways found in the files accessed through utilidors. These doors acted as travel methods throughout the Pizzaplex, and they led from Rockstar Row to Rockstar... Yo, seeing the map like this gives me, like, just flashbacks to the glitch I was explaining earlier, how I would see the world through Freddy's eyes how you, in that chamber like you aren't supposed to, and Gregory would just be standing right, like, like, imagine Gregory just standing right in the middle, and this this is all you'd see. Raceway, That's the best way to explain that glitch. It was a nightmare. I had to do Monty's claws like five Monty's times. The mechanic barely survives in the final game. As Which, by the way, do you realize what I'm saying? I had to do Monty's claws five times or like five plus times. Which means I had to do the fruity maze every time before Monty. Oh, God. Or that stupid maze. I, I forgot. Is it called? I keep on calling it the fruity maze. Because that UCN... No, not UCN. Because of the FNAF 6. Because of the FNAF 6. That minigame was annoying. It's not the Fruity Maze. It's the it's the Chica's Gymnastics Maze or whatever is in the gym area. Monty you know what I'm talking about. You played Security Breach. Roam into the daycare when summoned by a security bot. And one mission sees Gregory sneak through a back area of Roxy Raceway to reach Rockstar Row. There's also an unused Fazcade hive room complete with BI decals and many access hallways that were likely made irrelevant by the implemented elevator system. There are four unused minigames. Bonnie Bowl, which is an early bare bones bowling minigame that is really unpolished and it was likely cut early in development because it was permanently removed in the February patch. Dang. Chica's Feeding Frenzy, which was hinted at via Duffel Bag, and the arcade cabinet still exists in Monty's Gator Golf. Chica's Feeding Frenzy. The game is accessible through hacking, but is very unpolished and was also removed in the February patch. Aww. The third minigame was a minigame mission, which would trigger in Roxy Raceway after placing the head on the driver assist bot. The minigame was similar to the Pizza Bot's Pizza Bake minigame, but Gregory had to drive around the track. The game's initial release opted to not use it and skipped to Roxy's decommission cutscene instead. Despite this, Oof. assets such as scripts, UI graphics, and dialogue are found in the game still. Through hacking, you can spawn the cart and drive it around the Pizzaplex. And nice. Into any animatronic causes them to ragdoll Gmod style. Nice. Still get a jump scare. No. Finally, the Monte Golf Arcade was originally meant to be extended, including double the total golf holes and improved lighting on many existing holes. It'd just be great if you can just ragdoll them and they just never walk again. Shockingly, it appears to be in a better state than the one that ended up in the final product, even more of an indication of the disturbing development cycle of this game. There's huh. also an absurd amount of unused collectibles, dialogue, and voice lines, the link to which will be in the description below, since there are simply too many for me to talk about. I don't blame you. Three unused assets also didn't make it into the final game. The Vanny meter. As we can all assume, Vanny was originally yep. intended to have a much more active role in the game, as any main antagonist in a game should. This is supported by the inclusion of a Vanny meter in the game files, which can only be found using a debug tool. Yeah, was... that 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 one. When this was found, th that that one pissed off Twitter <laughs> for a good like couple of days. <laughs> so where all you would see is Vanny meter all over Twitter. That that one, that one, that one, that one cut deep. It's discovered that when the meter was full, Vanessa would become Vanny. 
Speaking of antagonists, one that actually goes overutilized in the fact that he shouldn't have been in the game at all, Burn Trap originally had a bigger role in the game. He has a chase sequence, a death animation, and even some unused audio in the game's files, but they're ignored, and the game simply skips to the ending cutscenes after the game is completed. For some reason, there's a cut texture for HAL 9000, the AI from 2001's The Space Odyssey, what? and I can't possibly tell you why this is. Right, then. At long last, we're at the end, the pre-release content for Security Breach. There isn't actually much here. Just some inconsistencies from trailers and the NVIDIA showcase. You know, I, I'm still I'm still wrapped on what he said about Burn Trap. There was a lot more to Burn Trap. Van Vanny. That's already a bad thing in itself. But it's like, Burn Trap had more of a role. That would have kind of been cool to see. <sighs> Should have got more time with Security Breach, man. Case. There are some unused voice lines. Still a little bit Danny, more time. Roxy, Vanessa, and one to two quote unquote unknown characters confirmed to be voiced by Matthew Curtis, who voices Nightmare Balloon Boy and Music Man. You will do as I say. Oh, uh, yeah. You will bring me what I want. And if you fail me, then you will. Both of you. Finally, for some miscellaneous additions, the Magician Bot and Comedy Bot's unique models were Magician unimplemented bot. upon the game's initial release. And no! In version Wait, one. you guys didn't see Magician Bot. Look at, him. look at him. Look at him in his stupid little top hat and his cape. That have been cool. Oh, man. No. Bring him back for ruin somehow. Upon the game's initial release and re-implemented in version 1.07. And Freddy's unused loudspeaker for the phaser blast was a greeting for Pizza Plex visitors in the elevator, which were eventually added back into the game as well. Hey, superstars, it's me, Freddy. Welcome to the Mega Pizza Plex. Grab a jumbo slice of pepperoni and top it off with an ice cold fizzy fast. Then enjoy our super games and attractions. Don't forget to stop by Rockstar Row and meet me in person. Have fun. Weird. <laughs> and that catches us up to the present day. I wanted to compile every game's unused content up till now in one succinct video, since I hadn't seen anybody include all of the stuff from Security Breach yet. Though the list may change with the release of Security Breach Ruin later this year, I can't imagine it being too drastically different. If you enjoy and long <laughs> that face. videos of this style and like Minecraft, feel free to check out my entire 10 year history of Minecraft speedruns. Wow. On that note, I hope you enjoyed the video. If y'all want me to check, I, I really want to, I really want to react to that video for y'all. So if y'all want me to react to that, let me know in the comments down below. That, that sounds super interesting. This person did a real good job. Like, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen somebody like take time to talk about all the unused content in FNAF like this in a video. Like I've only read it on Wiki back in the day. So yeah, it was really good that he did this and added his own little comedic uh, stuff to it and, you know, the list in order. Really great, really great. Make sure you guys subscribe to this person. Try to get him to 10,000 subscribers. And um, yeah, I really do hope they take time with Ruin, man. Seriously, like don't even, like just give us the year it's coming out like they did, but don't give us no month. Don't give us nothing. Just work on it very hard. Steel wool somehow if you see this. Don't leave anything interesting out this time. Put it all in. Get as much development time as you need. We can only hope. This will be better than the OG uh, security breach game. But uh, anyway, guys, let me know uh, your thoughts on the unused content throughout all the Finance of Phrase games. Let me know your favorite security breach glitches. And uh, yeah, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications, and I'll see you all later. Peace out.